welcome everyone from Utox to Rectory. I'd especially like to welcome anyone new or anyone who has not been able to worship with us in the past. I hope you have uh, you feel fully part of this online worshiping community and that you can find that you can meet with God through this service. So today we hear Jesus's farewell to his disciples in John's Gospel and we read about his ascension to heaven in the book of Acts. So let us commit to deepening our understanding of what it means to say goodbye and learn how saying goodbye is part of God's plan for our lives. We're going to start by singing together our hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Alleluia. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through the prophet Ezekiel, God promises to put a new heart and a new spirit within us. So let us prepare to receive these gifts by confessing to our shortcomings and our wrongdoings. When we reject the new heart and new spirit that God freely offers us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we are cold-hearted and mean-spirited towards others, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. When we ignore the message that Jesus' teaching has for us, hardening our hearts so his words can't reach us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now hear our reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olviet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James, all these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence, with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made known your name to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of our living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember a conversation I had with a friend who had had a heart attack a couple of years ago. He spoke about the heart attack as a dividing line in his life. There was life before the heart attack and there is life after the heart attack. He said it changed how he and his wife are with one another, how they see their lives and that they're reassessing what really is important helped them. That dividing line isn't so much a way of marking time or remembering an event. It's one of those threshold moments that calls into question everything. Priorities and values, the way we live and relate to one another, the things that truly matter, where we want to invest our time and our energy and how we want to be in this world and what do we want from life. Dividing lines are those moments when life gets really real. They hold before us questions about who we are, who we want to be, what we've done and whether our life matters and makes a difference. There isn't one right answer to any of those questions. It's an ongoing process of getting clarity and working out our life. And I wonder if that's what's happening with Jesus in today's gospel. Today's reading is part of what's known as the farewell discourse. It's the night of the Last Supper when Jesus has washed the disciples' feet and then he begins this very long monologue about leaving and his impending death. He talks a lot and for a long time. Um, if you note, it's about four chapters long, which is about 117 verses. Lots of just talking. He talks about what it all means and what it will be like for the disciples. But we also get some hints about what's going on within Jesus. Jesus's prayer isn't a simple, dear God, please. It's actually a bit rambling and long winded. It's confusing. It's hard to understand. It's as much about him as it is the disciples. Some of the prayer is Jesus saying what God has done, what he has done, what the disciples have done and what the world has done. The rest of the prayer is Jesus working through what's happening. I wonder, have you had those sorts of conversations? I know I have. For those conversations in which we're thinking out loud, wrestling with life, making statements, asking questions. The conversation goes in all sorts of directions and it circles back on itself. Sometimes it makes no sense. We often contradict ourselves. It's anything but linear and straightforward. We're listening to ourselves as we talk and trying to get a clarity and come to terms with what's happening within us. Sometimes they are conversations with a friend and other times they are prayers to God. Jesus's prayer isn't so different from the way I prayed at times and the way I suspect you also have sometimes prayed. It sounds to me like there is a thread of grief running through the prayer. It's almost like Jesus is trying to get some clarity and work out his life, what he has done, what is coming next? It's like Jesus has come to a dividing line in his life and more often than not, dividing lines are places of prayer and pleading. We all come to dividing lines in our own lives. It might be a heart attack, the death of a loved one, a relationship breakdown, the loss of a job, a shattered dream, an aging body. But it might also be a graduation, a marriage, the birth of a child or a grandchild, a retirement, an unexpected opportunity. In some ways, our lives are a series of dividing lines. Every one of us could look back and see the dividing lines in our life. The questions that were raised, the choices made, 
the struggles faced and the ways in which life changed. Dividing lines frame the human condition and our struggle to be authentic, faithful and whole. In that regard, Jesus isn't as different from us as we often think or want him to be. Today, we see the human Jesus standing in solidarity with us and our humanity. Today, we see the human Jesus working out his life. And who among us doesn't know what that's like? We all do. We all struggle to work out our life. So what are you working out and struggling with today? What is the dividing line running through your life? What are you doing with it? I can't tell you what to do with those dividing lines. I don't have your answers. But I am struck by what Jesus doesn't do. He doesn't isolate or close in on himself. He doesn't get angry or resentful. He doesn't resist or fight back. He doesn't run away or try to escape. He doesn't complain about or deny the reality of what is happening. Instead, he faces his life. He's in touch with his humanity. He feels what we feel. He grieves. He weeps. He gathers with his friends. He prays. So what about you and me? What will we do when we come to the next dividing line in our life? What attitudes, choices and behaviours will we bring to that dividing line? How will they help us across? Maybe you are at a dividing line. Why not use Jesus as your example? and face it by talking with friends or someone you trust and with prayer. And if you're not at the dividing line, maybe you can be that someone who helps someone who is. Offer that to God now as we pray. Let us pray for the church and for your world and for all people according to their various needs. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for our risen and ascended Lord. And through him, you have promised to be with us always. Teach us to be aware of your presence and to live in your love, that we may walk in the way that leads to glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world that we all may be alive to the mystery of your working in and through your people. That we may be ready to speak the good news and share the kingdom with all. And especially at this time give us confidence, hope and to trust in you. May your Holy Spirit be poured into us that we may learn to live in cooperation and collaboration in a very real way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your world, for our religious and political leaders. May your Holy Spirit be poured into them and may their judgments and decisions be directed by and towards you day by day. May they and we become more deeply aware of our essential unity. And may they be guided by love for all your creation. And we hold before you all who are making decisions in this time of crisis. Give wisdom and courage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we hold before you our local communities that we may be alive to the presence in all that we think and say and do. We hold before you all who have been economically challenged during this time of emergency 
and pray for those who are financially burdened. Those who are looking for support within the community. And we pray for our children and schools that they will make right decisions uh, for safety and security for all your children. Lord, teach us your ways of love and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Heavenly Father, we hold before you all who have been personally affected by COVID-19. For those whose spirits are low, those who are feeling helpless, troubled, anxious, those who are grieving, that they may know the healing presence of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we live and move in you, you are in us. And we are already in the fullness of that life which is eternal. And we rejoice in your presence and pray for loved ones and friends who have gone before us. And we hold before you, especially those whom we know ourselves, who have passed from this life to be in your nearer presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we thank you that you know each and every one of us. Gift in us each day experiences of your love for us and for all people. So in gratitude, we offer our prayers to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Because 
is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying... Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. He gave, again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who will call to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. As we receive communion this morning, we do so on behalf of all of you. We do so in the expectation of the day when we can receive communion together. And as we do so, I invite you to receive a spiritual communion now with Jesus our Lord. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We're going to sing our final hymn this morning, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Thank you for sharing in the worship this morning and I hope you have found it helpful. And I invite you to bow your heads for a final prayer of blessing. May the Father protect you and those you love. May the Son guide you throughout your life. May the Holy Spirit comfort you in times of pain and separation. And may we be one as they are one. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Because you